these were the seeds from which the tree of life developed. They were able to split, replicating themselves as bacteria do. The secrets of evolution are time and death. There's an unbroken thread that stretches from those first cells to us. The secrets of evolution are time and death. There's an unbroken thread that stretches from those first cells to us. The species swam and crawled before us. We all know that. It's the understanding of evolution. That the way things are today and the species alive today is very different from the way it's been in the past how completely new and modern this awareness of the fact of extinction is. That is the fact that species die. That the creation did not happen with just species all being created, surviving in Noah's flood, and then here we are. But there have actually been species dying in the past, and you're going to see the resistance our Western culture has had as science has unearthed this amazing understanding. Beginning in 1796 with the great anatomist Georges Cuvier in France, he was actually studying these kinds of very large molar teeth uh, that were relatively easy to find both in North America and in Europe because they are, come from creatures that died o only 13,000 years ago that we know of today. Uh, members of the elephant family, but he could see from the teeth that the fossil teeth he was finding that these were not elephants. These were different from elephant teeth. Also, he was finding tusks, and the tusks were different from elephant tusks. Turns out we now know that it was mastodons and mammoths that he was looking at. But because enough of the world had been explored by 1796 by Western culture, he was arguing that these creatures were extinct, that these creatures were no longer alive. Now that was radical, and here's the reason why. He says, what has become of these two enormous animals, the remains of which are found everywhere on Earth, and of which perhaps none still exist? Beings whose place has been filled by those that exist today, which will perhaps one day find themselves likewise destroyed and replaced by others. Now again, this is before evolution was understood. Charles Darwin, 1859, was the origin of species. So see how long ago this was before that. Now this idea was heretical. Our own Thomas Jefferson, before he became United States uh, president, he was one of the great naturalists of the time, culturally, natural history-wise. In fact, bones that were discovered that he studied uh, were eventually called, named after him, Jefferson's ground sloth, found in North America, a very large creature. Thomas Jefferson wrote these words, it may be asked why I insert the mammoth into a list of American mammals as if it still existed. I ask in return why I should omit it as if it did not exist. Such is the economy of nature that no instance can be produced of her having permitted any one race of her animals to become extinct, of her having formed any link in her great work so weak as to be broken. So you see, he, Thomas Jefferson was resisting it. In fact, he was resisting it so much that when he did become president, he decided to launch the Lewis and Clark Expedition. Now, President Jefferson told Congress that the reason that we needed to explore and send a party to explore up the Missouri River and hopefully find a water route all the way to the Pacific was that it was important for commerce, for connecting the Oregon country um, with the rest of the United States. What he did do, though, is he took Meriwether Lewis aside and he said, Meriwether, okay, you're going to be looking for this water route, but I want you to listen keenly to what the Indian people say because I want you to prove that mammoths and mastodons still exist. I want to prove George Cuvier wrong. Extinction can't possibly happen, not in a good world like this. Well, later, the Lewis and Clark expedition was about 1804. Later, in 1822, finally complete fossils were being discovered of gigantic beasts that it was very clear they do not exist. The continents had been well enough explored. Iguanodon was the first of the dinosaurs discovered in Europe. And then much later, uh, the last half of the 1800s was when the real the heyday of the dinosaur discoveries out in the Badlands and the semi-arid areas of the American West. 
But this was a turning point. At this point, scientists everywhere, natural historians everywhere, as they were called at that time, had to admit that extinction really happened. Charles Darwin himself, when he was on the voyage of the Beagle as a young man from 1831 to 1836, again, iguanodon had already been discovered. Extinction was understood as a fact. He himself, while he was in South America, discovered a skull of Toxodon and parts of Mylodon. It's called Mylodon Darwini Darwinii, named by someone. Gigantic beasts that lived in South America and are alive no more. So this fact of extinction was something that Charles Darwin had experienced, actually experienced himself on his voyage. So natural historians, scientists knew that species had gone extinct, but how could they explain it? Why would God or nature allow this to happen? What good could possibly be served from the death of species? Charles Darwin himself would be the one to answer that, but many years later. He understood that death of species is natural, but to understand that death is natural and generative at every level of reality, Darwin had to discover the role that natural selection played in the complexification of life. 1859, on the origin of species, this is his great work. This is where we, as humankind, finally had an understanding that death uh, at the species level does play a creative role. Think about it, if more than 98% of all species ever alive on Earth all tried to cram onto this planet together right now, there'd be no room for them. In order for life to, complexi to complexify from the bacterial slime level on up to where we are today in so many different lineages, there had to be death of species. Not just death of individuals, death of species, playing a creative role. Without the death of countless individuals and species, there would be no complex life. If we value our own species, if we value the other species of complex life, then we must be thankful for the creative role that death plays in this universe and here with life on planet Earth. Now, Lauren Isley, the great um, religious naturalist, noted this fact in his 1962 book, the firmament of time. Here's his essay on death. Before he could explain life, he had to begin the whole book with an essay on death, the scientific understanding of death. Here's what he wrote. It is necessary in surveying the human quest for certainty to consider death before life. Man, even primitive man, has tended to take life for granted. Death was the unnatural thing, right? The result of malice or mistake, the afterthought of the gods, or in the Christian world, the result of the fall from the garden. He continues, in the development of a scientific approach to life on this planet, therefore, the recognition of death, species death, phylogenetic death, had to precede the rise of serious evolutionary thought. For without the knowledge of extinction in the past, it is impossible to entertain ideas of drastic organic change going on in the present or future. This is so important to understand. Our understanding of extinction is so young. These are things that could not have been known 200 years ago, much less 2,000 or 3,000 years ago when the sacred scriptures of much, much of the West were written. So this understanding that comes from the sciences is not just for the head, it's also for the heart. It gives us an appreciation for the role that death plays. In fact, I would make this challenge. Anything that's important to you, that you love, in this life, this world, is here only because of the creative role that death has played over millions and millions of years. The secrets of evolution are time and death. There's an unbroken thread that stretches from those first cells to us. The secrets of evolution are time and death. There's an unbroken thread that stretches from those first cells to us.